Baptist Church, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Let's take our song books, go to song number 600. Song number 600, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. Then we'll go back to 532, higher ground. Let's stand as we sing 600, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder 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 i'll be there on the third let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done Song 532, we'll sing higher ground, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. 532. Good evening. It's great to see everyone out. Hopefully everyone got a good day of rest and uh, a good day of um, remembering what we learned this morning as we um, spent some time with God today. And I, I hope and pray that you came here ready to hear another message from Pastor Ben. Um, and uh, I just uh, want to thank him for the, for the time that he took in uh, giving us that message this morning. It was a great message and uh, it really blessed me. So we're looking forward to this evening. So uh, if you're a visitor this evening, we, uh, we welcome you to North Baptist Church. We're glad to have you. And uh, let's open up the service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for another time that we can be in your house. We thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. And Lord, I just thank you that uh, we have a, a day that is set aside that we can come to your house and then rest and then come back for, for more of your word. Lord, I pray that we would be fed this evening from your word. I pray that we would hunger for it. And Lord, I pray that it would fill us up and that we would um, be able to think about it during the week. Lord, I just ask that you would um, be with us as, as we sing and as we worship and as we fellowship with one another. I pray that everything that we say and do would be uplifting to one another, and I pray that it would be glorifying to you. Lord, I just ask that you would be a Pastor Ben this evening as he opens your word and, and uh, gives us some thoughts that, that you've given him, that he's studied, and I pray that uh, the words that he says would just be uh, impactful and, and effective in our lives. And Lord, I pray that, um, Lord, you would just uh, change us and that we would become better, um, better from it. Lord, I just ask that you would go with us now, and it's in your name we ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but this afternoon I seem to be humming along. I need the Bible. That was a great song this morning. 
Great job singing that. We're going to do something similar tonight as well here in a little bit during our offering. So as the offertory begins here in a little bit, we're going to have words up on the screen to a new song that Shannon will be playing, and then we will um, we'll look at that as well after she plays that for the offertory. We're going to sing Before the Throne of God Above, three verses of this song. It's not in our song books. The words will be up on the screen. Before the Throne of God Above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So before the throne of God above, we'll sing three verses. You can remain seated as we sing. We have a little bit of announcements, so um, just to kind of echo what was said this morning, um, some upcoming things tomorrow, just a reminder that we have a softball game. Uh, it will be at the Montrose Field, just a reminder if you would like to come out to that. It will be at 6.30, so it's in Montrose behind uh, the McDonald's there. So if you'd like to come out tomorrow at 6.30 and cheer on the softball team, we'd love to have you out. Um, also, um, there will be a men's prayer meeting at 8.30 on Tuesday, uh, followed by the deacons meeting at 9.30. And then there will also be a women's meeting at uh, 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. So uh, please come out to those. And then uh, we hope to see you uh, after this evening. We hope to see you back on Wednesday for our regular services. So at this time, I'll ask Jack to come up uh, and read the missionary letter. This is a little note, a letter from Mike Barr, who was one of our missionaries in Iowa City, Iowa. Believe it or not, uh, uh, there's not... A really a fundamental church in that whole area out there in Iowa City so uh, they begin to work here and here's what he has to say hello everyone I hope your summer is going well thankfully it is not over but I wanted to update you on how things are going in the church in June we had our first summer fun in the park and we had five children get saved on July the 4th we participated in the town parade and passed out 4,500 tracks and invitations to our church we are praying that people will come and that souls might be saved. On July the 5th, we had a sports fest teen rally and we saw three teens get saved. Pray as we try to get these children and teens to come to our church. Many of them lack support from home. While we have had our ups and downs with attendance over the summer with people being gone for trips and vacations, we were excited to have 10 first time visitors yesterday. 
a large family whose teen was recently saved, a single lady, and a lady we met from door-to-door -door visitation. This is the second person that has come from door-to-door -door visitation recently, so this is very encouraging. I encourage all of you to go out with your church on door-to-door -door visitation. If your church doesn't officially go out together, ask someone to go uh, from the church to go with you. These are some of the requests, requests it has uh, uh, for us to pray for. One, the summer in the fun park ministry, operation saturation, for the Lord to provide us with our own building. So these are three things that we can pray for the Barr family and their ministry there in Iowa City, Iowa. Now, if you want to come forward. If any one of you would like to be on the missions committee, you're more than welcome to come. We meet on the fourth Wednesday of every month at five o'clock, and uh, we'd sure love to, to have you get in on that ministry. Let's pray. Father, thanks again for this day. Thank you for your blessings, Father. And thank you for our missionaries here at home and abroad. Thank you for the bars, Father, and their, their ministry there in Iowa City. Thank you for uh, those who have been recently saved through their ministry, Father. What a blessing that is to that family and to us as well. Thank you that we have a part of that ministry, Father. I pray now that uh, you will uh, uh, help us to be an encouragement to all our missionaries, Father. Pray now that you'll bless your offering. Bless, uh, pray, Father, that it'll be used to bring honor and glory to your name. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. familiar with that song a little bit but we're going to sing both verses of that a passion for thee set my heart oh dear father on thee and thee only let's stand as we sing a passion for thee
say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. Thank you for that special this evening. Take your Bibles, go to Genesis chapter 43. Genesis chapter 43. As we heard this morning, we should understand the power of the Word of God. I think it has something to teach us on every page. And I hope and trust that that's something that we... As we look at tonight, we can get a better glimpse of some of the things that um, God has done and shown his people. Let's open with a word of prayer, and then we will get into our passage tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful that we have the privilege to open it here this evening. Lord, I ask that you'll just be with us in a special way as we uh, just look at uh, some of the things that you have for us, Lord, and just uh, the great sacrifice you made for us, Lord, that we can just get a better understanding of what you came to do, and Lord, just the, uh, the, the great, so great gift of salvation. Lord, we love you. I ask that you'll just be with us tonight in a special way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Probably one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture is the story of Joseph. And I think most of you uh, have a good understanding of what the story is about, the story of Joseph in the Bible. Joseph, the story sort of spans about six or seven chapters in the end of the, end of the book of Genesis, and Joseph tells an awesome story, and I, don't, I can't think of a better word, of just a redemption, a forgiveness, of God using somebody in the most dire of circumstances and using it for good. We're going to look this evening at the intercession of Judah. The intercession of Judah. We're not going to read the whole story of the life of Joseph, but I just want to take a couple of minutes and sort of summarize, and uh, there's a lot of scenes in the life of Joseph. I... Uh, a few years ago, I got a movie of the life of Joseph. And I know sometimes you've got to sort of be careful on biblical depict movies that depict uh, stories of biblical characters. But this was fairly accurate. And uh, I remember the story, and there's just so many different scenes in Joseph's life. When, he was, uh, when his brothers hated him, they sold him into slavery, and he went to Potiphar's house. He went to jail, and he rose to prominence in the kingdom. But... Um, we're going to sort of set the stage for a scene in the life of Joseph that I really think and it paints a picture of what has happened for us. And uh, so I think it's a pretty, pretty unique story. But first, we're, going to, we're actually in, um, I, I think I may have told you chapter 42, but we're going to go to chapter 43. 43, sort of picking up the story here where Joseph, of course, is in charge in Egypt. Joseph's in charge of uh, the famine, and he is in charge of food and, and making sure that it lasts and making, uh, making you know, deals and stuff with the people. And he is really trying to sort of set Egypt up to be a place where people could come for refuge. And uh, in chapter 43, Joseph here is, uh, Joseph had, has told his brothers uh, that they need to bring back Benjamin to Egypt. And of course, we know Benjamin uh, was... Uh, Joseph, uh, Jacob's favorite now because he thought Joseph had died. And so uh, Joseph had told, and Joseph knew that, and, but Joseph told his brothers, do not come back here unless you have Benjamin. And so Joseph is uh, sort of expecting his brothers to come. His brothers are reluctant to come because they know that uh, J uh, Benjamin has such close ties with their father. 
And so um, picking up here in uh, chapter 43, we're sort of with the brothers now back at home and uh, their conversation with their father. 43 and verse 1, And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. But if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. And Israel, Jacob, said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me, as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? So Jacob saying, why did, you why, why did this happen? And in verse 7, they said, The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have ye yet another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of it, these words. Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said unto Israel, his father, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and also our little ones. I will be surety for him, if my hand shall thou require him, of my hand shall thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee, and set him before thee, let, then let me bear the blame forever. For except we had lingered surely, now we had returned this second time. So Joseph and his brothers are in a situation where they have to return. They have to go back to Egypt because they have ran out of food and they are in a dire situation. Judah says to his father, if, uh, unless we want to all be saved, I ha we have to go, we have to bring Benjamin. Remember, Simeon is actually, he, he's, he's, he had to stay back, so Simeon's actually already in Egypt, so uh, Jacob essentially already uh, uh, lost a son, if you will, and so Simeon is, is, uh, is imprisoned, he's kept there in Egypt, and so now he's, uh, Jacob's presented to bring a second son, give him up to Egypt. So Jacob, of course, has, does not know the situation going on in Egypt. He continue, and, and so verses 12 through about uh, 16, or 15, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Israel sends his sons with double the money, with fine uh, objects, with uh, precious ointments and different things to really make recompense for, uh, for last time. And, and this, picking up at verse 16, and when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, so they come back to Egypt, Joseph saw Benjamin with, with them, he said to the ruler of his house, bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. So Jacob sees, or I'm sorry, Joseph sees his brothers come back with Benjamin, and he knows that he's, he's going to have one final test for the brothers and to see whether their hearts were truly repentant. And so, end of chapter 43 and the beginning of chapter 44, Joseph gives, we won't, we won't read the, in, in entirety, but Joseph gives his brother one final challenge. Joseph houses them for the night. He feasts. He gives them a feast. He gives them um, nourishment. He also sends them away with food. But in the, in the beginning of chapter 44, Joseph sets up the brothers for a, a uh, I want to say confrontation. He sets them up to have a conversation with his brothers and really uh, have this whole thing come to a head. Chapter 45 is actually the, uh, some, the, the, the apex of, of the entire uh, story of the life of Joseph. But in verse 44, Joseph sends his, his brothers away, but unbeknownst to them, he places a, his silver, his special cup, he places it in the sack of Benjamin. Benjamin had, the, had a, a sack, and so he placed it in Benjamin's sack, and then they went and captured them again and said, Some, one of you stole. And then the brothers, of course, are astonished that the cup is in Benjamin's uh, sack. And so uh, they then have to return to Egypt. And so I was sort of setting the stage here for chapter 44, verses 14 to, to 34. Verses 14 to 34 is going to be our text tonight. And again, we're going to be talking about the intercession of Judah. The intercession of Judah. As Benjamin and his brothers are brought before Joseph, there's something that's going to be taking place here that's going to actually be a picture of something that takes place for us, that took place for us so many years ago. We're going to first look at the idea of Judah's intercession was genuine. Judah interceded for his brother Benjamin. Look at verse 14. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. 
And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Wot ye not that such a man as I cer can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? So Ju <laughs> Judah here is essentially speechless. He says, what, 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 can I, what can I say? What can I do? I mean, it, 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 it happened. I don't know what to say. And so he's saying, uh, God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. So Joseph gives his brother a command. He says, okay, Benjamin is now my servant, leave. And so Judah's in a situation where Judah has to decide if he's going to stand up for his brother, or if he's going to leave in peace. Well, I want to first look at the idea of Joseph, or Judah's intercession for the life of Benjamin was genuine. Judah's intercession for the life of Benjamin was genuine. Look at verse 18. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear. That took some courage. You got to look at the situation here. Joseph is second in command in Egypt. Joseph is one of the highest ranking officials there. And his brother, who didn't know it was his brother, his brother approaches him and asks for permission to speak to him. That took courage. That took something that, that uh, probably his other brothers didn't have at the time. They were, they were scared. But, Ju but Judah approached and he uh, began this long intercession for the life of of Benjamin. Jusa, Judah also interceded for Benjamin earlier. Go back to chapter 37. Chapter 37, a few chapters earlier. Chapter 37, going back to the story of the brothers um, wanting to sell him because of the dreams he was having and because of the favoritism shown to him. Beginning of chapter 37, they sort of conspire about what they're going to do. They, uh, they, they uh, attack him. And they throw him into a pit. And then, in verse 26, uh, Reuben and some of the others were discussing what to do. Verse 26, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let, let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. So Judah sort of intercedes. Now, of course, it wasn't necessarily a good thing to, idea, to sell him, but we're going to look at how that worked out for good. But uh, Judah's intercession for the life of Benjamin, first, I think, was genuine that we can see. Secondly, his plea was based on a love for his father. Judah, when I, when I say intercession, Judah approached Joseph and told him, I will be in the place of Benjamin. Benjamin cannot stay here. Benjamin has, uh, there's a love my father has for him that he, I, I, will be, I will be in his stead. Let me stay and be your servant. Let Benjamin go. But Judah's plea also was based on a love Judah had for his father. Look at verse 30 of chapter 44. Look at verses 30 and 31. Chapter 44, Judah says this, Now therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die, and thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. Judah's love for his father was so strong that he said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to intercede for the life of Benjamin. I'm going to put him in my place so that he can return to my father. Joseph, or, uh, Judah had a love for his father that transcended his, his past, some of his past wrongdoings. Judah was and by no means a perfect man. Judah had many problems in his life, uh, but he did, he did intercede for Benjamin. He also interceded earlier for, for uh, one of his other brothers. But Judah also had a great love for his father that caused him to have this passion to want to intercede for the life of Benjamin. Because Benjamin would have had to stay in Egypt, and if he would have returned without Benjamin, and he explained the grief that was brought to his father. Then third, he was prepared to take the full punishment. 
If you put yourself in, in a Judah's shoes for a second, Judah has no idea what his slavery would entail. Judah had no idea what was in store for him if he gave up his life in the stead of Benjamin. Judah said, I'm going to do it regardless because the love for my father is great. In verse 33, he says, Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord. And let the lad go up with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. So Judah makes this plea which lasts a good 20 verses. Judah is pleading with Joseph. Please do not keep Benjamin. Please let me stay in his stead. Later on, during Jacob's blessings to his sons, he prophesies of one who will arise from the tribe of Judah. You know, Judah here, now we, if we were to take this picture of Judah and look at it for, for, at its face value and just say, okay, that, that's a good story, that was a nice brother, nice thing to do, um, I think we would be, we would be um, missing some things that I think God would have for us tonight as we look at this passage. First thing I think we ought to notice that this story, I'll call it a, this account, paints a picture of something that was going to happen with somebody else from the tribe of Judah. The account sets the stage for years later when a servant from the tribe of Judah showed genuine love, who, because of love for his father, put his will aside to take the full punishment for me and for you. You know, the lion of the tribe of Judah is what uh, our Lord is referred to. Go to uh, Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Judah, because of his intercession for the life of Benjamin, later on in the book of Genesis, he is given great blessing. He is, giving, he is given the promise that the uh, Messiah would come through his seed. In Revelation 5, in heaven, the books are sealed. And the, and the angels and the people are looking for someone who is worthy to open the book. And in Revelation 5, verse 5, and it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. That's Jesus Christ. And Judah paints this picture so long ago as, as, the, as the, uh, the founder of the tribe of Judah. And Judah is the first one in this tribe, and he does this act that so greatly pictures what Christ did for us. Go to Genesis 49, a couple pages over from where we were. Genesis 49. Most of us know the story. In um, after this situation with Joseph and ben, or with J Judah and Benjamin, um, Joseph was just beside himself. Joseph began to weep. And Joseph could not contain his joy and his sorrow that he had for his brothers. Joseph revealed who, who his brothers were. The families were reunited. And in chapter 49, uh, Jacob is actually giving, um, giving his prophecy and his promises to his sons. And look at verses um, 8, 8 through 10. He says, uh, this is Jacob speaking here, and he says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall, who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Jacob's giving a prophecy here concerning his son Judah because of the intercession he made and he painted a picture of what was going to take place so many years ago. Jesus, our Savior, did the same thing. He showed genuine love for his people. One of the verses that is probably the most quoted and memorized, John 3.16. And as we, as we know that verse and as we hear it, as we hear it Every so often, maybe every week, a lot of us have memorized that verse. It can become so commonplace, but the idea of loving someone so much to give your only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The love 
that Jesus had for God caused him to do that. Look at John 4. John 4. The genuine love that Jesus had for mankind, Jesus Christ had for mankind, allowed him to do what he did. In John 4, verse 34, Jesus Christ says this, Jesus said unto him, saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Later in the garden when Christ was praying, he said, Not my will, but thine be done. And we look at the life of Judah back in Genesis and we see what a picture Judah painted. Judah painted this idea that the love for his father compelled him to action. The love for his father compelled him to want to give his life for his son, his brother. He also put his will aside to take the full punishment for our sins. Now, in, in the story of Genesis, Judah offered to take the full punishment. Judah offered to be in the stead of of Benjamin. Judah offered to do this, but our Savior, Jesus Christ, did take the punishment. 1 Peter 2, let's go there. 1 Peter chapter 2, and I know we're sort of bouncing around everywhere, but um, a lot of verses here that apply to that. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. It says this, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Jesus Christ took the penalty for our sins because of his love for the Father and because of his genuine love for mankind. You know, and as we look at the story of Judah and we think about what Judah offered and what he, what he said he was going to give up. We think of our Christ and what he so willingly gave up. There's songs that talk about what Christ gave up to come to this earth to put on him the form of a man. Go back to Genesis and we're going to be at two more passages then we'll be done. I know we're sort of all over the place here. In the Old Testament, Joseph is a type of Christ. That means that Joseph in his life represented something that Jesus Christ did for us or in, in, that, in that time would do. Moses is a type of Christ. Joseph is a type of Christ. They, they rescued a people. They, they, uh, they protected them. They brought them through times that were very difficult. And of course, uh, what Christ did for us. But back in Genesis 40, where did I say we were? I think 40... Five. Back to Genesis 45. We finished uh, chapter 44. So in the whole chapter, uh, Judah is pleading for Benjamin. Look at Joseph's reaction. Joseph's reaction. In verse 40, chapter 45, verse 1. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried. Ca cause every man to go out from me, and there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. There's a couple scenes in Scripture that I would have loved to see with my eyes. This is one of them. Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, and he tells them who he really is, and he forgives them of what they did. One of the other things about the story that's pretty amazing is back in chapter 46, two pages over, chapter 46, verses 29 and 30. Verses 29 and 30. So Joseph reunites with his brothers. He forgives them. He, he offers, they, 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 they embrace and they cry. But look at the story of, look at this account of Joseph reuniting with his father, Jacob, who thought he was dead. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him and he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said unto Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And so this idea of this reunion, of this joyous occasion, brought forth because 
Judah so willingly gave himself, offered himself to be a sacrifice. You know, we're going to have a reunion one day with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we look at this picture of, Ju of Judah and what he did, I hope that it will encourage us to do these things, uh, to be encouraged as we look forward to that coming. Let's close with Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And I know we are all over. Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll look at the first three verses. Hebrews 12, the first three verses. Sometimes in our life, we can become weary. We can become troubled. We can become discouraged in the things of life. Because, you know, sometimes not everything goes right. Not everything goes the way that uh, we think it should. Or the, the way that we plan. But you know, God has a plan. Later in the book of Genesis, God, uh, Joseph tells his brothers, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And God meant it to be uh, to, so that we could save souls. But you know, if you're, if you're discouraged, if you think, you know, some of these things are just, some of the things of the Christian life are just so hard for me to get my head around, for me to grasp, because things seem to just uh, always happen, the wrong, happen wrong for me. Chapter 12, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your minds. Unless we remember what Christ did for us, we will lose the power to do what he called us to do. We have to have that in the forefront of our minds as we go about serving him, loving him, using our talents for him, doing the things he's called us to do. Because unless we remember what he did, it's going to be very easy for us to lose the strength and the power and the vigor of doing what he's called us to do because it tells us, consider him that endured such contradiction or um, hostility of sinners against himself. Consider what he did for us. Consider our intercessor. Consider the great uh, weight he bore for me and you. And when we consider that, when we look at that and we think about that and we let, us, let our hearts meditate on the fact that we had somebody take our place, it will give us a strength we need to run the race today, to run it in the here and now, to run it when things get discouraging, to run it when things get hard. And so as we looked at the life of Judah tonight, I trust that as we consider him, consider our Savior and the fact that he took our place, that it would encourage us to continue on. To continue on and to be, uh, to be what God has called us to be. So I trust that I would encourage you to read the rest of that story of the life of Joseph and the, the way God used him, the way God used Judah, and the way that we can learn from those men and let it, let it affect our lives here and now today. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll continue. Father in heaven, we're so thankful again for your word. Lord, I know that um, this scene in Scripture is so, um, is so powerful. It's something that we, have, um, we, can, we can look at and say, wow, what a man of God to forgive, Lord, to, uh, to have this, uh, this salvation offered to his brothers. And Lord, even one of his brothers, Judah, to willingly offer to stand in the place of his brother lord and as we consider our savior our intercessor jesus christ who so willingly did the same thing for us who gave himself who showed a genuine love who obeyed the will of his father and took the full wrath that we deserve lord i pray that you help us to consider that to remember that as we go through our daily lives as we can be discouraged so easily and as we can go through things that are very difficult, I pray that you will help us to take those things and learn from those. We ask this in Jesus' name.
Amen. We're going to go ahead and close the service. I know that we, um, we went pretty short today. And uh, just something that was on my heart that I was thinking of, the idea of uh, Christ being our intercessor. And so I trust that you'll consider that this week, look at that, and that you will uh, just be encouraged as we go along. All right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and be dismissed. And let's go ahead and stand. And we're going to, let me encourage you to take advantage of some of the things that we have going on this week, next week, and in the weeks to come. And that we can just be, uh, be active and be willingly participating in those things God calls us to do. Uh, Del, could you close in a word of prayer?